friend you are? Allen Ginsberg. Are you a writer? No, I'm not. Well, you're not anything yet. Under the right circumstances, even he might change the world. Um, I know that you had signed Daniel early on to play the part, but he had other commitments, uh, especially with Harry Potter, but you waited for him. Why did you wait for him? What, what was it that he brought to the character of Alan that no one else could have? Um, if I'm being fully honest, we didn't wait for him. Oh, okay. We had a financier at the time, and I was told we had to move forward, so I picked my other top choice for the lead, Jesse Eisenberg. Mm -hmm. And we struggled for two years with Jesse in order to get the movie get made, and then Social Network came out. And then Jesse called me and said, John, I think I just played the most iconic Ivy League college student I'll ever play in my entire life. I think I need to play Grown Ups now. Mm. And that was fair, and I totally understood, but now I had a movie with no money, no cast, and I had to start from scratch. And I remember, though, having met Dan, and he did such a beautiful job in the audition, and he was unavailable for two and a half years, is what they told me. And I looked at the calendar, and I'm like, oh my god, it's been two and a half years. And I did what every director is not supposed to do, which is write a desperate email at two in the morning to Daniel Radcliffe himself, basically saying, I hope you don't think I'm stalking you. but. We had such a great time together. I feel like there was such a level of trust between the two of us, and I thought you would do a beautiful job in this movie. If you're ever interested, if you even remember who I am, you know, feel, please feel free to contact me. Let me know if you're interested. And the next day, I woke up to an email from him, and it was one word, and it said, absolutely. Awesome. Welcome to the edge of the world. So you met Lucian in the lunch line, and now he's all that you can see. I was just talking to John and he mentioned that um, for research purposes, he didn't want you guys looking into who these characters became later in life, just at the moment. I mean, is that challenging for you as an actor? Because you, you obviously, you're portraying a real person, so you're more under the critical microscope. So you want to know as much about this person as possible to just sort of stay away from all that. Stuff. No, it's not hard at all. It actually made it a lot easier, I think. And I think it made us not worry about playing icons. And I think that's the great thing about the script is that, yeah, you can read, the, you know, you read the script and you go, you know, you, you're reading about Ginsburg and Burroughs and Kerouac, but actually, after a while, you stop remembering that you're reading about literary icons, and you just read this story, which is, even if the people involved in this story weren't the Beat Generation, you could have still made a film of this story because it's good enough on its own merit. This is just the beginning, you know? What the hell is this? Living. Dying. How many liberties were you guys able to take with the characters, the dialogues, given how, you know, how involved John had been from the beginning of this thing right to the end? Well, um, the, you know, the characters are, I, I think it's all fairly uh, accurately portrayed in terms of what actually happened and who these people really were. Um, when you go back, I mean, with Lucian, especially when you go back and read about who he was and the things that he did um, at, at leading up to this time, he was a very different person once he went to jail and got out of jail. But And the script was really script, well written, yeah, so script, we didn't have yeah. to... Like, go off page it wasn't a much, lot of improv yeah. or anything like that. I mean, the dialogue's very specifically written how these guys would talk. And, and we, I could think have. We, we, we could have gone off page, but you didn't really need to, funnily enough. It felt like, the, yeah, what we had, the time we had, it felt like everything was there. And we workshopped it a bit before mm -hmm. the movie and, like, talked about it. But it's funny how much the script did pop from the page and you felt like, actually, we were telling a very honest, you know, account of what actually happened. The disruption we long for... It's our turn. ...comes along and... How could you? I know who you are. The chemistry between the characters in the film is, is very crucial mm -hmm. to the film. How did you guys nurture that chemistry? A lot of it was just um, intuited in the moment and on the day. You know, I was playing someone who um, was completely magnetized by another person and you know thankfully Dane is an inherently magnetic performer and so that helped and if we were ever you know in need of being put on the same page that was where John Krakitis came in he was a great leader he brought great tenacity enthusiasm and a clarity of vision I think we all almost immediately grew to trust him and the more that you trust your leader, the more you're safe to give over to whatever you need to give over to. The circle is broken, but with death comes rebirth. And like all lovers, 